Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Ireland AM. It is July the 8th. Hope you can spend your Saturday morning with us. Coming up, it's all Ireland hurling semi final weekend. We look ahead to what should be two cracking games and the rest of today's sport. Are you a fan of the fermented food fad? Well, we'll be discussing the latest trend in nutrition. We're in the height of summer holiday season, but what if your travel plans go wrong? Whether it's cancellations, missed flights, or the dreaded French air traffic controllers, we'll discuss just what your rights are. Emmerdale star Liam Fox will be spilling the beans on his character's latest woes, including that massive punch up this week. Looking forward to seeing that. Well, it started with Pong and now it's a multi billion euro industry. We'll be sitting down for an esports gaming set with two champion Irish gamers a little later. And Paul is joined with us today. What's going on over on your side, Paul? Morning, you two. We're taking a trip back to the era of disco, lava lamps and Charlie's Angels in fashion today. Stylist Emily O'Donnell joins us. Emily, what's on the menu? Yes, 70s prints are back. They are dominating the international catwalks. We are seeing a lot of spots, a lot of paisley prints, a lot of graphic prints and interestingly enough, bird prints. So I'm going to be showing you how to style this incredible old trend. Well, we're staying alive on the catwalk. Back to you, Elaine. Thanks for that, guys. But for now, we'll see what the world is looking like as you wake up. Anne O'Donnell is in the Virgin Media News Hub. Thanks, Elaine. Good morning. Well, the US has announced it will send cluster bombs to Ukraine. The White House has been defending the move as it's a highly controversial weapon that poses a deadly risk to civilians and it is banned in over 100 countries. Here's the latest. <laughs> 500 days into the conflict, and Ukrainian forces are making slow gains in the east of the country. Their long-hailed counter-offensive largely failing to break through Russian defences. <laughs> With concerns over the slow pace of progress, the US has announced a controversial move to supply cluster bombs to Ukraine for the first time. It's a difficult decision. It's a decision we deferred. It's a decision that required a real hard look at uh, the potential harm to civilians. Mm -hmm. And when we put all of that together, uh, there was a unanimous recommendation from the national security team and President Biden ultimately decided in consultation with allies and partners and in consultation with members of Congress to move forward on this step. These munitions explode over targets, releasing dozens or even hundreds of smaller bomblets. Human rights groups say their failure rate means some bomblets remain unexploded, meaning they pose a significant threat to civilians. More than 120 countries have banned their use, including most NATO members, but not the US. Both sides have used cluster munitions in the current conflict, particularly Russia. The Pentagon claims the bombs it is sending have a lower rate of failure than those employed by Russia. The UN says it's against the move, but NATO's Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg has refused to give a stance. Aubrey Robinson, Virgin Media News. Gardaí are appealing for witnesses after a man was killed in a crash involving a lorry and a car in County Roscommon. Well, the incident happened on the N5 at Bellinagare at around 4pm yesterday afternoon. The driver of the car was in his late 70s and pronounced dead at the scene. Unions at RTE have warned that the crisis that's gripped the broadcaster is likely to get even worse. The comments came after a meeting with the new Director General, Kevin Backhurst. Next week is expected to add further detail about payments and culture within the organisation when Ryan Torbody and his agent appear before two Oireachtas committees on Tuesday. You're very conscious what else can come out over the next coming weeks. There's some very serious concerns what could happen. It is a big hurdle. It was very difficult at start to we congratulate or commiserate with a DG coming in here with this. Um, but we have to be positive because we're positive here for the workers here in RT, the ordinary workers here that at this moment in time are keeping this organisation going. Elsewhere, rescue teams are searching for survivors in the rubble of a partially collapsed building in northeastern Brazil. At least three people were killed when the incident happened in the city of Paulista yesterday morning. 
Elsewhere, robots have been telling reporters that they could be more efficient leaders than humans, but they are promising not to take our jobs. Well, nine AI-enabled humanoid robots sat or stood with their creators at a podium in a Geneva conference centre for what the United Nations built as the world's first news conference of its kind. The event was part of the AI for Good Global Summit, meant to illustrate how new technology can support the UN's goals for sustainable development. What are your thoughts on the potential for AI-powered humanoid robots like yourselves to be more effective leaders in government? I believe that humanoid robots have the potential to lead with a greater level of efficiency and effectiveness and human leaders. We don't have the same biases or emotions that can sometimes cloud decision making. And it's time now for a check on the weather that you're waking up to. We compare 14 insurance quotes to get you the best deal. So choose chill and work smarter, not harder. This afternoon we'll see unseasonably windy conditions and patchy rain and drizzle that should clear up over the day and temperatures ranging from 17 to 21 degrees. This evening then we'll see mostly dry skies with sunny spells and the odd shower despite easing winds. Temperatures ranging between 17 and 21 degrees. And tonight will be largely dry with isolated showers rising from the south to become more widespread allowing for a chance of thunder. Overnight temperatures will run between 13 and 14 degrees. Chill Insurance work harder so you can work smarter. We compare 14 quotes to get you the best deal. Now let's check on your morning paper starting with the Irish Times. It leads with climate change out of control after hottest week. The paper reports that the UN Secretary General has warned climate change is out of control following an unofficial analysis of data which showed that the average world temperatures over the last seven days to Wednesday have made for our hottest week on record. The front page of the Irish Examiner reads, unexplained school absences surge. The paper goes on to write that unexplained school absences have quadrupled over the past three years, raising concerns that thousands of students have missed out on crucial parts of their education. Over to the Irish Independent, which leads with RTE allows agent star clients cover doll grilling. It writes that RTE stars Claire Byrne and Joe Duffy have been given the green light by the broadcaster to cover their own agents. Eroctus Committee showdown with politicians next week. On to the tabloids now and the Irish Daily Mail writes, TDs demand RTE stars be sanctioned. The paper cites TDs and senators with saying that RTE stars who have breached journalism guidelines should be hit with sanctions and that revenue should be scrutinising any and all additional earnings. The front page of the Irish Mirror reads, shame of the RTE freeloaders. It goes on to say that Judge Anthony Halpin has vowed to keep TV licence fines to a minimum, blasting freeloaders and those with godlike personalities within RTE. The Irish Star also covers the Halpin story, leading with the headline, Judge and Fury. The paper quotes Judge Halpin as saying that those appearing in his court over licence fee fines may feel hard done by following RTE's abuse of statutory funding. And finally... The Herald, now where the front page reads, murder accused tried to strangle me, claims X. The paper reports that a former girlfriend of the man being held in a Spanish jail in connection with the murder of Dublin woman Kirsty Ward has claimed that he tried to strangle her. And finally, the Irish Sun goes with the headline, Tuberty off to London. It writes that Ryan Tuberty will briefly jet to London this month for career talks with several British TV and radio bosses with his agent, Noel Kelly. Now, do you ever think back to being a kid when you saw something you really wanted and saying you're definitely going to buy that when you're older? Well, a new survey has found that two thirds of adults have kept their word as more and more people are being described as kiddles. Now, this is that thing where you've got you've got something that you you loved as a kid, yeah. but you're bringing it into your you're bringing it into your adulthood. Yeah. Right. So there was a. 2,000 Gen Zers and Millennials have found that if given the opportunity, 67% would try to buy a replica of a toy or item that they remember from their childhood. Is there something that you remember playing with in your childhood? I was going to be really mean, but I'm not going to do it because it's very early in the morning. If you say back in Victorian times, I will actually I was going to say, I was going to say, did you have a rock you used to play with? Neolithic times. Oh, if you have a rock in a second. It's been a lovely... This is, this is 
this what I have to put up with? I come back from my holidays and all I get is abuse. No, actually, though, all jokes aside, I forgive career. you because I am quite ancient. Um, I, oh, yeah. <laughs> I went YouTubing and I was watching Smurfs and the gummy bears yes. and everything the other oh, night. Gummy bears, yes. do you remember them? Are you too young? I remember I'm, the Smurfs. You remember yeah. the Smurfs? Yeah. I remember the gummy bears. Mine was always Power Rangers and I recently went back and watched the, the first ever Power Rangers movie and I was obsessed. I think that's where my drag costumes come from. It's like, <laughs> I want to be a gigantic that's Power Rangers. Oh, I thought so it was would Bosco, you, sorry. Would you go oh, on to... Oh, 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 it's tip for tat today. <laughs> Wait, Paul, so would you actually spend on getting like a Power Ranger on eBay or something like that? I think... I. I think, like the read says, I think I'd love to like have a look at it and go. Okay. I'm going to buy that for myself now yeah. for my next birthday. Yeah. Would I spend that money? Maybe not. Have you got something you used to play with? I don't think so. Like I what? used to love Bratz and Barbie dolls, but I don't think now I dream about getting them back. But I do watch old cartoons when I, you know, oh, yeah. I, I YouTube like the old Bratz cartoons or Braceface and all them so, like, Nickelodeon ones. Like it's just so comforting. You're in the 59% of people because these are the some of the uh, most common signs that you might be a kidult, which is K-I-D-U-L-T. Number one, top of the top of the list. Frequently, we rewatch childhood movies oh. and shows. Oh. Number two is watching cartoons, and down the end, buying kids the same toys from your own childhood and playing together. That's yeah. a lovely thing. Actually, yeah, okay. my dad did that with Star Wars. I was going to say that's taken it too far, but you I said have... it's a lovely thing, so I don't I have a lightsaber. <laughs> you have a lightsaber? Yeah. I, mean, I do. It's it's a long, very long and green. And do you... And it fold, it's, it, it's like ones that kind of fold in like that and then it goes... But you see, Elaine, that's yeah. a cool thing. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Lightsabers are cool. I think so. I, I don't know. But my, my, um, my niece bought my sister a Tiny Tears for Christmas a couple of years ago. She always wanted one when she was growing up from Aww. Santa Claus and she never got one and she got one at Christmas and she cried. Aww. I have images of me and you now on a night out playing with lightsabers. Yeah. <laughs> I do. I I, I'm, I'm, I'm very fond of it. I have to know. I have great fun with it. But do text us in 0896 Are you a kiddle? Do you still have a favourite childhood toy you cling to? Get in touch. <laughs> Up next, Anya Donegan is the name everyone's talking about as Claire's amateur golfer takes the Women's US Open by storm. We'll be chatting about all the biggest sporting stories next. Welcome back. It's All Ireland Hurling semi final weekend, and it's a thumbs up from Katie McCabe after her injury scare broadcaster. Jonathan Higgins joins me now to go through all the biggest sporting stories. But first, here is a pick of the sports headlines, starting with the Irish, Irish Daily Scar. It leads with Onan United. Man United are closing in on a 45 million euro replacement for David De Gea. Tunnel Vision is the main headline in the Irish Examiner. Could Aaron Gillan be the difference for Galway? as they take on Limerick in today's All-Ireland Hurling semi-final. And finally, the Irish Mirror goes with thumbs up. Ireland captain Katie McCabe has, McCabe has confirmed that she expects to be fully fit for the opening game of the World Cup after suffering an ankle injury in Thursday's friendly defeat to France. Uh, Jonathan, good morning. I suppose morning, we Lynn. do have to start with hurling today, don't we? Yeah. Uh, interesting times ahead. Go on, tell us. It's a feast of hurling, isn't, isn't it? it? Yeah, and a, OK, I'm bitter, I'm from Cork, I'm bitter, but we move on from that, yeah. <laughs> there we go, yeah. No, I think um, even from the neutral perspective, the fact that it's such the jammed uh, fixture calendar that we've come to expect now, and having both of we saw with the football last weekend, the double header over successive days, and then we have, well, it is the same four as last year. Uh, yeah. It's two insane games, two games that are probably people that have debated about what way they want to go, particularly, I think, tomorrow's game is like, where does it go, where does it go? But it is, I think... We've got the four best now. We yeah. leave the, the Munster hurling snobbery to one side. We've got the 50 50 split. Munster hurling snobbery. How <laughs> very dare you. But like Lim Limerick Galway, I mean, that's. Yeah. It, I mean, th there's some backline there. Yeah, and look, and you look at the, what the Limerick strength and depth, uh, obviously, the big talking point for Limerick for some time has been, I think, a much over the top. Started off the year with saying they were going to absolutely destroy everyone, and then you had John Kiley go and stop spreading that ball around. Yeah, and yeah, and yeah. then they had their not quite a wobble. Well, Maybe for some teams it's a wobble, certainly not for many others. They've won the league, they've won Munster, they've come on through. Declan Hannan is a huge loss, even with a squad as such in depth and so much talent. He was their their little bit of quarterback, a little bit yeah. of a battery in the clock, whatever we want to call it there at centre back. First time in a long, long time in a championship game that they haven't uh, played with him, so that has seen the reshuffle. But it has resulted with Gareth Hegarty going back there as well as probably 
the biggest, strongest, most physical halfback mm. line that we've ever seen. Yeah, um, what an it insane. really is, my what God. A, yeah, like it just penny for Aina Murphy this morning, the goal goalkeeper, and he's looking out and trying to poke the ball down on top of that absolutely wall of uh, a Limerick defence. So, look, Galway have always ran close. You go back to the 18 final where there was a point in it. Um, but look, Galway's record in recent years in Crow Park has been horrendous. Mm. Uh, they have a lot to prove, don't they? You do. Like my good friend Morris Brosnan and the examiner sent me on the stat yesterday, nearly scared me. Since Galway won the All Ireland in 17, Galway's only won once in Crow Park. Mm. It was a victory over Wexford. That's a scary proposition. And Galway yeah. are kind of maybe have a choppy turvy sort of season to date. Horrible against Dublin, got the draw, got stung against Kikenny after mm. a mixed performance, and then got over the line against Tipperary. What was a, a poor Tipperary performance, but they're going to need that and Booker loads more. It's a, um, head, head out moment, but it's uh, it's hard to see past Limerick. And of course, Kilkenny versus Clare. This I is mean, the game that I just can't that, call. I mean, that's going to be so so close. It is, and I've seen, I'm lucky enough to see a lot of Clare th this year in the Munster Championship. They've been insane. They have a manager in Brian Lowen that you know players will go through an absolute brick wall for. But they have key personnel just coming back. They're looking at three and six with Conlon uh, uh, and Cleary. How fit are they? They're both named in the team. I think. That's the one thing that you can probably take over four teams is yeah. you would suspect there's going to be a lot of changes, but they're big personnel. And in the last time out, Dublin for 20 minutes before half time created a lot of trouble on that full back line for Clare. You had Lowen just coming in for his first game of the championship season. They created a lot of trouble. I know Tony Kelly dug them out with a couple of goals, but Kikenny will, you imagine, they put, mm. might put TD in there. Even Walter Walsh might go in there as well and try and make some dividend in that potential weakness. It all goes back to last year as well. Claire still feel, I think, a little bit of upset. They had the emotion of losing the Munster final the way they did. Yeah. And they couldn't get their things right. And Kenny just caught them on the hop. But this is a game where I've been talking about all week. I've changed my mind so many times. I really don't know what... So you can't going. even call it now? I, I think Claire just about, if, they're, if their key players are fit, but I think this is one that could potentially go all the way. It's... Yeah. It's uh, just a huge, insanely yeah. exciting game to look forward to. We're leaping across the Atlantic now, the Women's US Open. There's one name that's on everybody's lips this morning, Anya Donegan. My God, what, yeah. what a performance. Speaking of player success, yeah. and, uh, I'm sure the, the Banner... The, the, the Banner County, they're all there, rising there, up there and rejoicing go, yeah. today. There we go. We'll see if they're all good with their sticks over the course of the weekend. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's. I just love when a story like this comes around every now and again. It's the feel-good factor. Um, how great is it to see Irish players on, on the top stage of, of world sport? and. Uh, yeah, it's such it's such a good story, and uh, I think tied for eleventh at the moment. So twenty one years old, my God! It's just it yeah, it's just a fairy tale stuff, and of course Leona there as well. Uh, we were picking up a couple of weeks ago. Had a little bit of a probably disappointing day in the in the last last day out, but yeah. there in succession again. So yeah, no Irish golf is in is a good place. Yeah, yeah, and of, of course uh, Leona's probably six shots off the lead now. Yeah, the so it's, it's, it's still, still, still there, but still there about. Uh, same with our female superstars now, Kate and McCabe. Thanks, but God, we've got <laughs> some good news with that because it was scary times. It uh, was. The defeat to France the other day. You can hear the, the big kind of sigh yeah. of oh no, what's happened here? But it could have been she down the first time, then she goes down the second time, and you go oh no, this isn't good. I yeah. Kind of flashbacks to. David Beckham in the 2002 World Cup where he's down and yeah. uh, everyone became medical experts in Metacarpus and, uh, and whatnot. But uh, thankfully, we're not going down. The x-rays have been good because if we were to have any chance in this horror group that we've got, we need our true superstar in, in flying yeah. form. And, Australia, uh, Canada, Nigeria. Yeah, we don't really, remind us. really do need yeah. them to pull out all the stops. But as it is, yeah. we should, we're, uh, should be incredibly proud of uh, Vera Powell's team for uh, achieving what they have thus far. Absolutely, and you just hope that it's taken them so long to get there that they can, you know, you don't want probably a scenario where it's like the Euros in Poland where we get there and yeah. then it's a bit of a, you know, a, a damn squid after that where we yeah. were just outclassed. Hopefully there is a bit of quality in the side and there's flashbacks there from that opening 30, 40 minutes maybe. Do you think they'll France. be happy with their last few friendlies though? I think the France game is perfect in the way that they've seen a bit of an eye holder and then that's the way they need to set up, that's yeah. the way they need to play, that all aggressive pressing, maybe set a little bit deeper on the counter-attack. We do have players, Katie's the top of those, mm. with pace, they can get on the break, but it was that kind of reality check before half-time, those two sucker punches of goals. But look, there's a slight tweak in Vera Pau's set up with a kind of couple of newer players coming in. It's changed the formation ever so slightly, but... I think the last game, they'll take a lot from it. You can imagine the review sessions after that, but yeah. it's going to be a big ass. But look, we live in hope and uh, they're all on their way down there now safely now as well. And what occasion to look forward to. Yeah, back home now to the League of Ireland. Rory Keating, my God, he pulled it out of the bag once again for Cork City. 
What an equaliser in the 91st minute. My God, he's just a superstar for them this season. Some strike, yeah. And uh, with draw uh, holding yeah. Shamrock Rovers level as well, it was probably a goal that, that Cork needed as well. And just, there were so many of those late goals. You saw Will Patchen getting yeah. a late penalty as well, for victory for Derry as well. You saw uh, Bowes yeah. uh, coming from behind against Dundalk. It was a night of uh, late upsets, particularly in the Premier Division and insane drama again. And uh, St. Pat's won't be happy though. They certainly won't, uh, not the way that, or, well, Pats will, but um, Draw or Dun Dundalk will be, will be will be happy. St. Pats won't be happy with that conceding that goal either. But maybe with that Derry equaliser in Rovers and clutching at straws, have we a title race on again? Yeah. Maybe Might not, be, maybe maybe you know. not, but uh, it's, a, it's a big result. And, you know, with Derry, a lot of talk with their manager going overseas. Yes, he stays. They have a couple of signings in that do quite well. Uh, and then like, when you score a, a late winner like that, one from the penalty spot, amazing scenes. Yeah, I suppose we do have to ask as well, like what is ahead will Bowes get will they be able to get to European football this year? Potentially, yeah. It's I think it's it's very wide open at the moment. Um huge result last night. Mm. You saw the scenes at the end. I think that's a word that was overused last night in Twitter feeds from from my son. I was uh, I was down in Cove watching Galway and Galway and Cove hold out a one one draw. Thankfully Waterford did the same, so the title race remains the, the same differential on yeah. top there. But you know, the battle for Europe is pretty much anyone's at the moment. Yeah. It, it, aside from maybe the top two, it is quite open. So it's there for anyone and a good run will take and it either way. You can't actually underestimate how much that means to a League of Ireland team to make it into Europe. The revenue it generates is huge. Oh, yeah, it's crazy. Financially, uh, it's it's night and day, particularly we won't get too much into it, but like the uh, the funding, yeah. shall we say, and the prize money internally here domestically for yeah. Ireland, it's just night and day compared to what you can get. If you can get a run in Europe, you're you're yeah. pretty much um, home and hosed financially. And we've seen teams do a, a big step up after yeah. getting that extra bit, bit of a few bob. But long way to okay. continue. Well, Jonathan, I won't be rushing to the bookies to bet on any of the GA predictions now because they're too tight to, <laughs> to call after our chat today. Listen, thank you so much Thanks, once again for joining us on the show today. Now stay with us. We're looking at the facts behind the very latest food fad. That's after this short break. Welcome back to Ireland AM. Now, fermented food is the hot topic in nutrition today. But what are fermented foods? Why are they so helpful? And how can we include them in our diet? Here to decipher if fermented foods are a fad, yeah, try say that at nine in the morning, is nutritionist <laughs> with Glenville Nutrition, Heather Leeson. Heather, good morning. Good morning. Uh, listen, fermented foods, they've been around for years, but it's only in recent times have we really been getting to getting to really probably taste them. What is fermented food? So fermented food is where the bacteria in f have been added usually and they've broken down some of the carbohydrates in the food. So there's beneficial bacteria in the food and that's why they are so good for us. And like you said, they've been around for thousands of years in some cases, yeah. but we're really only starting to understand now how, how amazing they are for our health. So is it just like the process that they're made in, that's what makes them have these qualities, these exactly. health qualities? Exactly, bacterial okay. fermentation. So you're talking about things like lactobacillus bifidobacterium and they're the beneficial bacteria that we really need for our gut. We were saying before the break that uh, stuff like this would have only been in a health shop and you would have kind of gone to a health shop. Whereas now every supermarket chain has them in, in all the aisles. Yeah. Why are they so important to our, to our diet? Well, you know, I'm always banging on about the microbiome. Our gut is really fundamental to health. So obviously a lot of us have IBS, microbiome, looking after your microbiome, having beneficial bacteria important for that, inflammatory bowel disease, but much more than that in terms of our mood, our hormone health, yeah. our immune health. Our microbiome is really fundamental and it's those bacteria that are doing the job. And the modern diet, modern lifestyle is not really gut bacteria friendly. Mm. So you, we need to be conscious of adding them back into our food if we can, because a high processed food diet will reduce your levels of beneficial yeah. bacteria. So will stress. So let's say something like IBS that many people struggle with. What are some of the benefits of implementing these foods in their daily diet? Like what are some of the benefits this can provide to them? So having a better microbiome will help reduce symptoms of IBS. But I will say if you have IBS, SIBO, inflammatory bowel disease or delicate digestion, just go handy first. Okay. Because if you put in too many fermented foods too quickly, you will get a reaction. So, so you want to go low and slow. Okay. It is something that would take over time that you would yeah. you would start 100%. to ease in. My partner has been doing this for quite some time, yeah. the apple cider vinegar in the morning, yeah. and I, I took a sniff of it. It's quite strong, but there, there's ways to implement <clears throat> these into your daily life. Yeah, the tang is the bacteria, so you kind of want that tang. If it smells really sweet, it's... That's it, you know, it's, it's good quality. Not, yeah, yeah, you need a <laughs> bit of an <laughs> You do, I'm afraid. But I mean, 
Traditionally, we will have used it for thousands of years in Ireland, even buttermilk is a yes. fermented food. Right. So you can use that in baking, although you're probably killing some of the bacteria. Yeah. Also brilliant in the summer for marinade. Mm. To marinate, say, your chicken or your meat before you barbecue it, but also yogurt. I mean, that's the easiest one. Mm. Natural yogurt, like this one here, you want to see something on the packaging that says live cultures, or you want to see on the ingredient list that there are bacteria in it, because yeah. a lot of the ultra-processed yogurts, they don't have those beneficial bacteria. Yeah. So you do want to have a look. If you're vegan or dairy-free, there's coconut versions, the soya versions that also have the bacteria. But again, you need to look and check what you're getting. So we're talking about going into this nice and slow, especially for a lot of people that can be apprehensive of foods like this. 100%. What are some of the foods or something you'd probably suggest that is easily available and easy to introduce into, let's say, your breakfast? Yogurt. So a yogurt. little bit of oh, yeah. a tablespoon or two of natural yogurt with your porridge, your granola, your whatever breakfast cereal you're having. That's a really easy way to put it in. And kefir is a little bit like yogurt. You kind of use it in the same ways, but it's got a different blend of bacteria. And I mean, these are all natural products, so they're all going to be a little bit different. And mixing it up is helpful. You can get kefir now any supermarket, like you were saying. So you might replace yogurt some days with kefir and put it in a smoothie oh, yeah. or put it in a salad dressing or just have it with your cereal. I suppose when it it's in breakfast. a smoothie or salad, like you, you don't really realise realize it's there, 100%. right? Yeah. percent We've covered we've covered like the buttermilk and the yogurt there. We've got the apple cider vinegar, which is there as well. And you know, when you take when you take the first whiff of it, it is quite like you said, the tang is there. But there's ways <laughs> to kind of introduce that into your diet. I may have took a little sniff of it during the break <laughs> and nearly knocked myself over. But there is ways to. To, to, to introduce that to yourself <clears throat> yeah. as a daily thing and it doesn't have to be, uh, oh my God, what am I going to take? No, not at all. I mean, quite a lot of people swear by having a little bit of vinegar in, say, warm water in the mornings. Mm. And that can be one way to do it. But I mean, an easy way is mix it with a little bit of extra virgin olive oil, make a salad dressing, and then you're incorporating the beneficial bacteria in a really easy way. And again, that's a lovely Irish apple cider vinegar cider. Uh, apple juice just fermented with bacteria. Some of the more industrial ones won't have the live bacteria. So you need to check that it so you're is looking a proper for live apple cider vinegar. And there's loads available. Now, you mentioned if anyone struggles with IBS to make sure they introduce this slowly and lightly. But are, they, are there any other caveats when it comes to fermented foods? There are. So um, kombucha, which is that lovely fermented drink, it's a fermented tea. And if you want to try that, they're both Irish oh, products. There's a raspberry that. one and a lemon. Uh, do you and want some ginger and lemon? Yeah, I'll lovely. Have that. So My that has a little bit. That's a tiny bit of alcohol, especially if you're making it at home, because of course you can make these at home really easily as well. So if you're pregnant, you might want not want to have kombucha. If you have, um, if you're immune compromised, if you've just had chemo, or if you're on immune suppressant drugs, you do need to be careful because they have live bacteria. Okay. Different them. type of shot for a Saturday Cheers. morning. Here we go. <laughs> Let's go. Now, what do you think? That's delicious. That's lovely. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. And, and mean, so that has, a, that has a health benefit to, for you. That has a health system. benefit. I'd actually enjoy much, that. <laughs> much better than drinking soft drinks. And if again, if you like, if you find it a little bit bitter, just add, dilute it with water. It's much, it's a lovely, refreshing it's drink. It's got a bit of fizz to it. Exactly. Well. Yeah. That's the fermentation. Yeah. Or, you know, miso paste, sauerkraut is the other one that's really commonly available. Sauerkraut and kimchi. Throw them into a salad, throw them, in, throw them into your sandwich, have them on crackers and cheese if anyone's brave enough. So these, are you, are you, <laughs> do you want to, are you, are you <laughs> I don't know about the sauerkraut, but I, I trust you on that one. Yeah. I trust you on that. I'll do the sauerkraut. Okay, okay. Right. so, so that's the sauerkraut. Now, I'm a pickle fan, so when people, I, when people go to drive throughs and they leave like pickles and stuff in their burgers, I always take them. <laughs> now, pickles not... are different because pickles are just um, stored in vinegar, okay. which is a fermentation, or which is a, like a storage process that stops bacteria. God, I'm really stuck it on there, I don't know. You are, my, you're a brave man. <laughs> oh, you're so so I would normally it. have that, not like he's just had it, but I would have it with a bit of cheese. Those oh. bitter foods are really nice with a bit of oiliness. So cheese okay. or, say, smoked salmon with yeah. a salad, a little bit of smoked mackerel, they're really good. What do you think? That would be lovely with salmon. You're right. Yeah, yeah Sorry. really good. Because I have a friend that would make, like, noodles, salmon, and always had a little spoon of kimchi on the side. And I was wondering why, but it's obviously very common in, like, Asian food dishes. But in general, people are seeing these ideas off social media and building new recipes around them to be healthier, you know? Exactly. And it's a little bit. So, like, half a tablespoon would be more than enough, yeah. even less a teaspoon to start with. Yeah. Quite quickly, these are all the stuff that we can put into our food, but there mm. is a probiotics, which you can just <clears throat> take daily to kind of get yourself yeah. through the day. A food is always most start with food mm -hmm. but for example if you've been on an antibiotic or um you know you're a, you're you've 
a little bit run down. Taking a probiotic supplement can be really helpful. Okay. It's a minefield. There's loads out there. So be careful what you're taking. Be careful because um, different ones suit different people. I mean, in clinic, we will check what people need. But for most people, talk to your health food store. There's Perfect. some really good brands oh, out there. Heather, Heather it's Lisa, always a so pleasure. <laughs> yes, a pleasure. learning day. A learning day. <laughs> well, up next, new season styles with a 1970s twist. See you in just a few minutes. Very welcome back to Ireland AM. Well, we are hopping into our time machines, taking you back to the 70s, where I was actually born in the 70s. Oh, yeah. Patty, try not to, you know, <laughs> uh, with retro print styles that'll work for your 2023 wardrobe. I'm excited to see your old wardrobe, Elaine. Oh, <laughs> my zimmer frame is around there, sorry. <laughs> well, we have stylist Emily O'Donnell who joins us now. You're going to show us how it's done, aren't you? I most certainly am. So we are seeing a massive revival of 70s prints on all the international catwalks and I love to take inspiration from them. We're mainly looking at a lot of graphic prints, we're looking okay. at a lot of paisley prints but also polka dots and bird prints. So I have an interesting mix here today and as always I'm showcasing Irish retailers and even better than that you'll be pleased to hear they're all Irish owned female run businesses. Not even better. Yes, even better. So one for the girls. So where are we kicking off? Yeah now? so we are kicking off with the graphic print on Ursula and this I suppose is a bit of a nod to Diane von Frustenberg who was the original 70s girl and her dresses, of course, became iconic with Sex and the City. And they are so similar to this. But if a Diane von Fustenberg dress isn't in your budget, Lear Boutique have you covered. Lear Boutique have this incredible brand, Jolie Moi, that we're seeing here. I've showcased them before. And they are just such a friendly dress for women. They go from an 8 up to a size 20. They don't crease. They're super flattering in terms of having pockets. And I just think they're a very friendly dress and a really great way to do the trend. And what Earth I love about this... Marilyn Monroe is yeah. now at any second. Yeah. I, I hope you're not going command worse. <laughs> <laughs> and Sonia has actually been absent from Ireland AM for a while who owns Lear because she had a lovely little baby girl and she actually wore these dresses when she was pregnant yeah. and she said they're also great for when you've had a baby, you know, if you still have sh not shifted a bit of the weight. They're yeah. very comfortable and also for breastfeeding. So just a few things to note there. And how are we accessorising Yes, today? we are, are accessorising with the very talented Bloheen Ennis jewellery. Bloheen, of course, her designs were seen recently on the red carpet at the Oscars on a cast member from the Colleen Kuhn. She has won numerous awards for her work. And what I love about Bloheen is she's a slow fashion brand. So all of these pieces are made by hand from the finest materials, but they're made in limited qualities as well. So you're not going to see a lot of the pieces. They're very unusual and very niche. And keeping the 70s theme going, I have these incredible wow. shoes from switchswoo.online. Switzerland is run by a great girl called Kelly. They're a Bottega Veneta tribute. I love a good tribute too. And with the shoes today, they're all from Switzerland. And I'm focusing on really wearable shoes that you can wear a lot of different times because you don't yeah. just want a one hit wonder. I love this. Wow. Dress. Isn't this gorgeous? This, paisley this is the paisley print okay. that we are looking at now. And of course, the bell sleeves, the shape, the colors. It's a serious nod to the 70s prints. This look is from memoriesboutique.ie. And what I love love about this dress is it doesn't crease. It's actually made from a really, really nice quality silk. It's so well priced and it's just ticking every box. You could wear this to a wedding, you could style it down. I've gone for the real 70s look by adding the hat. I think it adds a little bit of panache and certainly people have a lot of occasions to go to. And we are getting a glimpse of some gorgeous earrings from Bloheen Ennis' new collection. Now this is from her Margot collection. It's all inspired by Barbie and Barbacore. Wow. That's the really Bloheen Ennis look, that kind of bold detail and the kind Isn't of structure, it? kind of fabrics and structure. Because I that's what I associate her with. You're spot on, Elaine. It's really her signature style, yeah. the soft kind of looks and 
very ornate and different. The and bracelet is so cute. Yes, so cute. isn't it? And I think as well, I've taken a little bit of an inspiration from Love Shack Fancy, of course, a very high-end label that's very expensive, but this looks exactly like it. And we have another gorgeous bag from Memories, and I just love it. This is available in lots of different colours. We couldn't do 70s without doing a little bit of disco. And again, the white mule is back. They are so chic. Of course, 70s is all about the mules, yes. the platforms, the wedges, and a great pair of shoes from Swiss Food that will take you everywhere. So now it's all about polka dot. Yes, the polka dot, it didn't really go away, but it's back with a vengeance. And I think it's something that all ages, shapes, sizes, and budgets can rock. This look, again, is from Memories Boutique. What I love about the skirt is it's just so pretty. It's tall. Often with prints, people are maybe reluctant to do them top to toe. So it's nice to be able to add an element of a print in without going too crazy. I think it looks super high-end. We're going for kind of a Chanel-inspired look here with the gorgeous jacket. It looks very vintage are these, are these the Blotnin? Sorry, is the Blotnin? Yeah, so these are another pair of Blohine Ennis jewellery, um, the gorgeous earrings that we're seeing there. And what's great about Blohine is she actually has lots of entry-level price points so if you want to kind of start buying your pieces they're really reasonable and also they're great for presents what I love about this set is there's a matching bracelet and I think they're the type of pieces that are going to go with everything I've taken the kind of print that's in the bracelet and brought it through as well with the bag which again is a bit of a nod to Jimmy Choo. I'm getting all the prints in in different ways, but making it very wearable and very friendly. Like this would take you anywhere. And you can't go wrong with a wedge. No, you can't. And I think everybody needs to have a good white wedge in the wardrobe. These again from Online. they're super comfortable. They do really good quality shoes. And I think if you're looking for one summer shoe, these are gonna work with everything. And also a wedge is so comfortable. And the 70s were all about the wedges and the platforms. I just think it's a really, really chic look. And and definitely something that all ages could rock. Absolutely love and that And then we're one. back with the print, 70s print we again, are. with another of those magic dresses. Yes, exactly, Elaine. So we're going with the bird print this time. That, I suppose, became really big in the 70s, and it's definitely something that a lot of the big designers jumped on. This is another boutique um, dress from Lear. What it's bird just is that? stunning. It's, it? We were trying to figure this out inside as well. It's kind of cross between a flamingo and a goose. It is, <laughs> and it's just gorgeous. It's very subtle you're not kind of doing anything that's intimidating some yeah. people are afraid of prints it's very friendly and again the dress is just so flattering i just kept the styling quite simple on this one to let the dress do the talking with one of these dresses you know you're getting a really good piece that you can style in so many different ways and i just think you can't beat the jolie ma dresses and then um, the earrings yeah, yeah the earrings that we're seeing again lohin ennis they are just gorgeous they're really picking up on the blue tone in the dress and what I love about them is Blohine's pieces come in lots of different colours, so you can match up any outfit. And finishing off with, I love these, a gorgeous pair of wedges from Swiss Woo. I think they just add a bit of panache. We like a little bit of metallic. It's a subtle nod. And again, if you're going on holidays or you have an occasion, they'll work with everything. Everyone's all about the carry-on luggage now. Roll up a yeah. few dresses. Yeah. And all of those dresses and pieces that I show can be rolled in a bag, and they're going to look as good as new when you Emily, arrive. Emily, as always, you nail it. Thank, Thank you, you so, so much. much. <laughs> <laughs> so much uh, still to come now if you're worried about your holiday plans going into disarray well we'll tell you what your travel rights are and he's at the center of soap's juiciest plot line we talked to Amardale's Liam Fox don't go anywhere with life. We're not, we're not being blown off the patio at all this morning. Not at, not all. at all. But we have a sensational couple of hours on the telly left this fine Saturday morning. Still to come this morning with Ireland now officially deemed as having the worst trans healthcare in Europe. We're sitting down with two March leaders ahead of this afternoon's trans and intersex pride protest. From flight cancellations to getting sick abroad, we'll explain what your rights are when holiday plans go out the window. And he's the man at the centre of Emmerdale's current massive storyline. Liam Fox will be chatting about his character, Dan Spencer's uncertain future. Paul, what's cracking in the kitchen? Yes, gang. Yesterday might have been World Chocolate Day, but today we are focusing on almonds.
it's Almond's Day. Chrissy Gibson is helping us out in the kitchen this morning. Chrissy, my stomach is rumbling. What's coming up? Uh, well, so, yeah, I think it's World Chocolate and Almonds Day. And almonds today. Oh. We've got a day for everything, don't we? So we're making an almond tort with chocolate ganache. Not a tart. Tort. A tort. Okay. Yeah, which is like a cake, just a bit more dense. Yeah, lovely. Right, back to you, Elaine. How to stay at home and drink wine with your cat day. That's what I saw on the internet yesterday. <laughs> I love but that. Must be wrong. We compare 14 insurance quotes to get you the best deal. So choose chill and work smarter, not harder. This afternoon we'll see unseasonably windy conditions and patchy rain and drizzle that should clear up over the day and temperatures ranging from 17 to 21 degrees. This evening then we'll see mostly dry skies with sunny spells and the odd shower despite easing winds. Temperatures ranging between 17 and 21 degrees. And tonight will be largely dry with isolated showers rising from the south to become more widespread allowing for a chance of thunder. Overnight temperatures will run between 13 and 14 degrees. Chill Insurance work harder so you can work smarter. We compare 14 quotes to get you the best deal. Now let's check on your morning paper starting with the Irish Times. It leads with climate change out of control after hottest week. The paper reports that the UN Secretary General has warned climate change is out of control following an unofficial analysis of data which showed that the average world temperatures over the last seven days to Wednesday have made for our hottest week on record. The front page of the Irish Examiner reads unexplained school absences surge. The paper goes on to write that unexplained school absences have quadrupled over the past three years, raising concerns that thousands of students have missed out on crucial parts of their education. Over to the Irish Independent, which leads with RTE, allows agent star clients cover doll grilling. It writes that RTE stars Claire Byrne and Joe Duffy have been given the green light by the broadcaster to cover their own agent's Eroctus Committee showdown with politicians next week. On to the tabloids now, and the Irish Daily Mail writes, TDs demand RTE stars be sanctioned. The paper cites TDs and senators with saying that RTE stars who have breached journalism guidelines should be hit with sanctions and that revenue should be scrutinising any and all additional earnings. The front page of the Irish Mirror reads shame of the RTE freeloaders. It goes on to say that Judge Anthony Halpin has vowed to keep TV licence fines to a minimum, blasting freeloaders and those with godlike personalities within RTE. The Irish Star also leads and covers the Halpin story, leading with the headline Judge and Fury. The paper quotes Judge Halpin as saying that those appearing in his court over licence fee fines may feel hard done by following RTE's abuse of statutory funding. On to the Herald now, where the front page reads, Murder accused try to strangle me, claims X. The paper reports that a former girlfriend of the man being held in a Spanish jail in connection with the murder of Dublin woman Kirsty Ward has claimed he tried to strangle her. And finally, the Irish Sun goes with the headline, Tuberty off to London. It writes that Ryan Tuberty will briefly jet to London this month for career talks with several British TV and radio bosses with his agent, Noel Kelly. So earlier on we were talking about kiddles yes. and talking about toys. We've had loads of texts in 0896 111 Mark says, I'm in my late 40s now, but as a kid I loved mask, car and truck toys. So I recently brought, bought a few bits from the 80s and 90s going to try for a collection. I believe we have a picture, do we? Yeah, That's look, pretty cool. That is pretty cool. I love that. Jimmy says, definitely a kiddled. We ordered some Daleks from Doctor Who on eBay last week. I think we have a picture of that as well. Yeah. Look at them. Wow. The Doctor Who fans, like, second to no. That looks like yeah, something so you'd want to show the visitors. It looks like a coffee machine. Yeah. <laughs> Doesn't it? Very fancy. <laughs> uh, we were also... I don't, well, we weren't really talking about it, but it is something to be talked about. The U2 Sphere in Vegas. Have you seen this? The which? No. The U2 I saw, we saw we the picture saw of that yesterday. It was uh, amazing. Our, one of our floor managers, Derek, was showing us. The U2 Sphere in Vegas is basically... It's an... Is, I, like, it's described as the world's most state-of-the-art venue, but it looks like an MSG sphere and it has to be seen to believe. So what you're seeing there is actually, it's something like 1.2 million LED pucks, oh. which is basically an LED screen. Um, and they can display various different graphics and it's the world's largest LED screen and it's in so Vegas. What's, what's the point of it again? Well, it's just a venue. It's kind of like Vegas. It's like Wait, so the there's fire, a, it's a venue less. so you can go inside it. Yes, you can go uh, inside yeah. the venue, but the out the outside of it is what everyone's talking about because I know we saw pictures 
of it looking like a, 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 um, basketball. a basketball. Yeah. The amount of electricity <laughs> was taken on that thing. Maybe <laughs> I'm Bill. Bill. a little bit like... <laughs> I, I guess well, it is Vegas. Like it is a, a place where it's all about the lights and the glitz and the glamour. And this is something that people would visit. Yeah, I would most know? definitely visit. Like you, yeah. there's, there's bits like that in London, um, but not to that extent. But like there's gigantic screens, and I just love to go to watch. Mm -hmm. But could you imagine watching your favorite artist on a big screen like that, just sitting on the path? Oh, that would be cool. Imagine. Are they going to be like holograms on it, like ABBA or something? I, they, there's no official, they haven't really kind of given like a, 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 like a stream of events or what yeah. could be coming. Basically, all you're seeing at the moment is this has just been the testing of it. Yeah. Oh. They've just been testing out the bits. It was first lit up on July 4th, obviously, you know, America's big day. And then now they've just been kind of doing bits and bobs. So the, uh, these images is what we're seeing what's happened in wouldn't, the last couple of days. Wouldn't it be great if they showed like the Super Bowl on it or if uh, there was a Vegas residency that you never got tickets for and they'd like sort of show that on the screen. Adele or something yes. like that. Yes. So I'm just mes I'm, I'm mesmerised. I'm watching it. Like If I was in Vegas looking at that, I'd just be frozen to the spot because it is quite astonishing, isn't it, yeah. what they can do with it. So you'd want to go in there and spend your cash. But speaking of cash, we're talking cash-only businesses. Like, there was an article in the Irish Times that shone a light on, do you know the bar, the Glimmer Man in Stony Batter? Mm -hmm. So this is a, a cash-only bar, and it's one of the few bars left in the city with a cash-only policy. Um, it's family-run business, and it's it's been family-run for the last 33 years, this picture of it there. But now the world is just becoming increasingly cash-free. You know, a lot of people are using their Revolut, Apple Watches, all that stuff. But the Glimmer Man has adapted by installing an ATM inside the premises. So people have no excuses. Now, can yeah. I have my soapbox rant here? I yes. went to get, change keys. I had to buy keys in like a thing shop and it said cash only business. Mm. But I don't carry my card yes. because I have to, I, you've, got, you've got your phone and yeah. everything. The limit is like unexceedable and I'm never going to spend that much money. Yeah. I had to go home to get my card to then go get cash to then pay this man to, to do my keys, to say I was fuming. Look at you, you entitled millennial. Oh, but no, oh, but Elaine, around. No, Elaine, it is a, a bit lazy of a... It's a lazy millennial. It's a bit of a... No, it is a bit of a nuisance, because we were saying earlier on, I have the same tenor in my purse that I've had for the last three months. I, I don't use it. It's just kind of there just in case, because I'm always tapping on my phone. Yeah don't have an Apple Watch now, but I'm always using one of my cards. So I think a lot of people are complaining about this because they they have said now, Patrick Fortune, who works in uh, the, the Glimmer Run, has said a lot of people are complaining about this. He regularly has customers that are saying, you're avoid, avoiding the revenue, you're doing this, you're doing that, but they just come down, show their certificates, they're revenue compliant. So I guess people have to put up and shut up, I guess. Yeah. He's not going to buy us around with a tenner in our pocket anyway. <laughs> I know. What am I going to do with a tenner? <laughs> myself a taxi home you might be on the pale not in Dublin anyway that's for sure <laughs> <laughs> anyway we'll take a quick break now and after the break we're catching up with the parade leaders ahead of this afternoon's trans and intersex pride march see you in three Very welcome back to Ireland AM now. Last October, Ireland was deemed as having the worst trans healthcare across the entire European Union. Ahead of this afternoon's trans and intersex pride protest in Dublin city centre, we're joined by two of the March leaders, Jenny Maguire and Ollie Bell. Good morning. Good morning. Now, pride at the heart is always a protest. Yeah. No more and no less than trans and intersex pride. What, what are the key goals that you both have or that, you know, this Pride has for the protest today? Yeah, um, so one of our biggest demands is around kind of bodily autonomy for all. Um, and like what you were saying at the start, you know, Ireland has the worst trans healthcare in, in, the, in Europe. So we're calling for, you know, um, a complete kind of uh, overthrow of the, the National Gender Service in favour of, you know, GP-led, informed consent-based kind of trans healthcare, you know, for, for uh, across uh, Ireland. And we call for that because, uh, you know, with trans healthcare in Ireland, it's, uh, you know, up to a decade long waiting list. Um, you know, yeah. when you're there, you know, you're asked really invasive personal questions, you know, um, around kind of your sexuality, your, your you know, like porn habits, um, oh. and around kind of 
detailing like really, you know, her horrific abuse that and trauma that you may have gone through. You know, questions even like cis people would not really want to answer in front of a doctor that they barely know. Um, and the fact that, you know, uh, a lot of the times you can be denied uh, healthcare and uh, trans healthcare for a number of reasons you know, because you're autistic, because, you know, you're on social welfare, maybe you're not out to everyone, like your family, um, or, you know, you don't fit into this, like, perfect kind of box of what, you know, the National Gender Service sees as, like, a, a real trans person. Mm. So we're calling for a much better uh, trans healthcare system that, you know, gives trans people the information that they need to make an informed decision and actually empowering them to make decisions about their bodies, you know, themselves and their transition goals themselves uh, without kind of having to fit neatly into this kind of box of what, yeah. you know, a true trans person is. Jenny, are we getting any better? Because I suppose education is the key where historically we, we had uh, pride recently enough and yeah. that was more of a celebration than a protest. But as Paul said, this really is about awareness and protest because a lot of people actually, and I, I think just through ignorance and not through malice, yeah don't understand. Is it getting any better? Absolutely. Um, I really wish I could say it's getting better, um, but we would say it isn't. I mean, just to jump off what Ollie was saying, like, uh, the current situation with trans healthcare, with uh, gender recognition, um, has stalled. We are at a place where trans people are once again up for debate. Um, it's become so normalised that, um, you know, in workplaces across Ireland, trans people, suddenly their identity is under question, under scrutiny, um, which just stops them from living in safety and security. I mean, uh, only recently, uh, trans feminine people like myself, um, we are now denied the right to get um, a breast augmentation with the current schemes in the HSE, whereas trans mask people can, um, to get a top surgery. Mm. Um, the waiting list is 10 years long. The different places across the country that previously offered um, private care are being told to roll it back and to stop. Um, and so we just feel like, even just on the streets. Ali, you said there about uh, it, it would make things easier for a GP-led, so for your own GP who knows you, who's grown yeah. up with you, this would make more sense as a process rather than somebody who, like you said, is... is asking invasive questions who yeah. doesn't know you. So that would be an ideal dream. Yeah, but also the fact that, you know, GPs are already kind of prescribing, you know, HRT, homor hormone replacement therapy to cis people. I mean, you know, cis women go through menopause, they're prescribed, you know, HRT, the same kind that, you know, is prescribed yeah. to, to trans women. If a cis man has low testosterone, you know, he goes to his GP and he gets prescribed testosterone. So it's not even like uh, a new thing that would have to be kind of, um, you know, implemented. It's something that GPs are already trained to do. It's just the fact that uh, GPs are, you know, being told by the National Gender Service that they can't, they can't prescribe uh, HRT to trans people and also if uh, a trans person is maybe self-medding or is getting you know hormones from you know the brain market which is something because that, that has happened many yeah, trans people that have that to do uh, they're told you know the national gender service is telling GPs like don't treat these patients don't give them blood tests that they may need like medically need to, for in harm order reduction. yeah for harm reduction and they're being told by the ngs like don't do this mm -hmm. so it's it's not a problem of you know gps not wanting to do this it's the fact that the national gender service I is blocking them from providing it's, it's, care it's kind of othered it it's like yeah. instead of your primary Segregated care or knowing you yeah. since you were small or whatever and they yeah. can recognize well obviously no shock to me yeah that this, uh, this person is trans and then they act appropriately like any other healthcare. Absolutely. But I, I, I was just thinking earlier on, I remember covering a, a court case years ago, Dr Lydia Foy, when Absolutely. she was yes. uh, campaigning to get her, her, the pass, her passport changed from male to female. Yeah. And I mean, the whole, the eyes of the world were almost on it and yeah. she was yeah. ultimately successful. But I thought that was would have been the start of a completely open discussion and oh, um, Irish people opening their minds. But, but we can see now that the aggression towards the trans community and the intersex community is actually getting worse. Absolutely. Um, Do you feel safe? 
do I feel safe? Do you I feel mean, safe? we like Ali. we have posters around yeah. town that we put up, and they've been ripped down. We have had stickers uh, put over our posters with horrific statements, trying to villainize and demonize trans people who are just trying to live their lives. Like, what are people afraid of? Um, I know. It what? seems fear. Yeah, I think I think it's also not only fear, but it's very much an aggression of wanting to keep the status quo, wanting to keep that idea of a nuclear family and that this is what women are, this is what men are, and they're completely separate. And that, you know, it, it helps, you know, the capitalist system to have those kinds of gender roles so enforced and so violently enforced because, you know, it justifies, you know, uh, rolling back on abortion rights, it justifies, you know, not paying women, you know, the domestic work that they do often in the homes, the uh, work that they do uh, towards the en elderly and the, the children, you know. Uh, we've seen it even in the pandemic, you know, nurses not being paid a livable wage. Um, and it's, you know, it's no, it's no coincidence that this is, you know, a very woman-led kind of workforce. Um, and so, uh, you need those violent kind of, you know, you need violence towards kind of trans people, people who don't conform to uh, the gender binary in order to justify, you know, um, uh, to justify uh, the wheels yeah. kind of turning this kind of yeah. uh, workforce. And yeah. today's about eradicating that. Today is about yes. having that protest and having that message. Where can we find you today? Yeah. And how can viewers at home help? Absolutely. So at 2 p.m. we are gathering at the Garden of Remembrance where we'll march to Dal Aaron. Um, and we are just demanding that you, if you can, take to the streets. And if not, be allies of trans people in Ally any way that so you can. Yeah. People, so people at home wondering, just look at this couch. We've got gay, straight, trans and uh, no. non-binary. This is the world we're living yeah. in. Let's yeah. just yeah. deal Absolutely. with it. And of course, um, the Trans and Intersex Pride March, it will commence today, I do believe, at what time again? 2 p.m. 2 p.m. Yeah. in the Garden of Remembrance. And all are welcome to attend. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank, you. Thank you so Thank much. You. After the break, let them eat cake. We're having almond torch in the kitchen. See you in just a few. Welcome back. Here on Ireland AM, we tackle many different questions, such as what is the difference between a tart and a tort? Very philosophical question. Thank you. <laughs> well, here with all the answers this morning is our star baker, Chrissy Gibson from Take That Cake. Oh, Good morning. Chrissy, where Good are morning. we going? So, you know, uh, actually, I, I think a better question is what's the difference between a tort and a cake? Oh. Because uh -huh. a tort is nothing like a tart or a pie. It's more or less a dense cake. It's made with less flour, sometimes no flour. Okay. Sometimes you can substitute the flour for, for ground nuts or a nut flour. So uh, as you can see, our cake, uh, once sliced, is, is quite dense in the center. You don't have that springiness that a, a typical cake so has. So it's almost a healthier cake in my in my head. <laughs> yeah, yeah, in my head. Yeah, it's it's yeah. a healthier, that everyone should eat. You need, you need that narrative. <laughs> so we're going to start with 170 grams of really soft butter. I do okay. use salted butter. And to that, we're going to add, or I've already added, 340 grams of sugar. You can use caster sugar or granulated sugar, whatever you have. Mm -hmm. And um, we're going to mix this up until it's uh, thoroughly blended, okay? This is not going to get creamy. You're going to notice you've got a bunch of little chunks of butter and sugar together. Now, we want two eggs in this, okay? And uh, make sure your eggs are room temperature so it doesn't go chilling your butter. Two eggs, and then we're going to blend it up again until it's nice and fluffy. Mm. This okay. stage, we're going to have a really fluffy uh, dough. And you'd start to think that you're going to end up with a fluffy cake. Yeah. But that, that's not the case. Uh, a lot of times, when you're making a cake, you'll find that your batter is quite runny. You can pour it into your pan. And, and not this, we're gonna be spooning this in because we're gonna end up with a sticky dough. Okay. Not a, not a, a runny dough. And Chrissy, is that the secret to having it so dense? Like the finish? 
Is that the secret? Um, do you know that the secret to having it so dense is the fact that we're using less flour than we are sugar. Uh, we're adding 340 grams of sugar, but we only add 240 grams of flour. And um, a lot of torts are made with, with nut flours. Is this a harder is this a harder recipe to make for an amateur baker or easier? No, absolutely not. You guys, this is so easy. How many ingredients am I using? I think I'm using six ingredients. There's nothing to it. You'll yeah. often find that with any kind of cake or tort, the fewer the ingredients, the better you know it's gonna be. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know why that is. Now we're going to add 10 mils of almond extract. Mm -hmm. um, over here you'll find uh, your almond extract is clear over yeah. here, and also it's harder to find the vanilla extract. If you can't find it in the baking section of your normal supermarket, um, I like to go to halal stores. Yeah. Um, I, I, I find every flavor of extract under the sun over really? there. Really? Yeah. So is almond gonna give you, is that like a good substitute for a vanilla? It kind of has that sweetness? Yeah, or, do you yeah. know, I love putting a little, just a little, Dab just a, a, a drop of almond extract in my brownies. Oh, lovely. Oh, it's because it does it give that, love it. Does it give that marzipan taste? A yes. little bit. Yeah, okay. And, and just a hint almond extract is quite strong. And so the fact that I just put two teaspoons in, 10 mils, it's actually quite a lot. Yeah. Um, and But this is an almond tort after all. So yeah. you really mm. want to taste it. Now, normally when you're baking a cake, you'll blend your dry ingredients together before you add them to the dough. In, in this case, we're, we, you don't have to do that. You can. We could add. Our, our salt to the flour and mix it up first before we, we don't have to do that. So that's here. salt you're putting in there. Just this is only a quarter teaspoon of salt, which okay. is this much. If you're weighing it out, it's not even gonna weigh a gram. So, yeah. um, but don't skip the salt. I also right. use salted butter. Is this to raise now the... No, no, this is just to make that flavor of the almond pop. Okay. I am using self-raising flour, however. Uh, okay. So any, 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 any raise that we get, uh, is going to come from that. Now, I'm gonna start slow here so I don't make a mess. Um, I'm adding that quarter teaspoon of salt with uh, 240 grams of self-raising flour. Can we give this a little bit of a... <laughs> oh, yeah. Do you know what that is? Put yourself to work, Paul. That's, that's chocolate ganache. There are two ways to make chocolate ganache. Yeah. Um, you can heat your milk over a double, uh, over a double boiler or... Um, uh, in the microwave, in the microwave, and then yeah. add your chocolate to that. Let it set five minutes to melt. Yeah. Or you can do what I did and just heat your milk and your chocolate together in a double boiler or in the microwave. Give it a stir. You want your chocolate ganache to be nice and silky, okay? okay. And use a nice chocolate. You're going to use uh, 140 grams of butter for your ganache. Mm -hmm. It's just, ganache is so easy. Yeah. 140 grams of butter and 170, I think it is. No, it's not. It's 350 grams of your nicest chocolate. And is ganache just something that anyone can have a little dollop on top of it? A tort, cake, anything? Yeah, and okay. it chills really nicely yeah. as well. So you could coat something completely in mm -hmm. your ganache, have it ha have it have a, a sort of a chocolate crust, Yeah, and, and that, that works really well too. So this is all going into this? The... This is an ungreased pan. Now, do you notice how I'm using I'm using a cast iron skillet yeah. because that is oven safe yeah. and it really holds the heat well. Mm -hmm. But I'm lining it with tin foil. Do you see how I have aluminum foil yeah. um, around the edges? And I've sort of raised the edges of that aluminum foil so that when it bakes, do you see, look at this. The edges have gone up a little bit. So it's almost holding yeah. like an edge to it. And so it, because we're raising the edges of the foil, we know that we're not gonna have a mess in our oven, which is important, yeah. Les, isn't it? Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, here we have our tort ready to be baked. That's now, it? That's it, I told you, anybody can do this. Now, here's the thing we wanna do though. This is an almond tort, so we're gonna coat the top with almonds, sliced almonds, not mm -hmm. slivered almonds, okay? Mm -hmm. And uh, this is however many you want, I'm using about, I suppose, a half a cup. Yeah. And um, if you want, you could also sprinkle just a little bit of sugar over the top. This is optional, of course. So just to give it that little bit of extra kick. Yeah, then we mm. bake it at 160 for about 40 minutes. When okay. you take it out, uh, you don't want it to be jiggly in the center. Okay, okay. we just... have a couple seconds left. Okay, so Are you going to... I'm gonna oh. give you some chocolate ganache. Don't you put that in your mouth yet, Paul. Oh. <laughs> He's dying for it. Can I have that, can I have that for? <laughs> yeah. Paul loves uh, so then... almonds. 
the chocolate ganache then goes all over the top of that. Oh, and, oh wow, wow. No. I'll, you know, I'll give you a bit of a look there. Ooh. It looks absolutely oh delicious. My gosh. I hope you like that, you guys. It's so easy, and um, you can eat it warm or room temperature. I, I tend to like my cakes warm. I'd eat it out of my shoe. Chrissy Gibson, <laughs> you are a genius. Full recipe details are on our website, My Mouth is Drooling, mm. or you can follow Chrissy on Instagram at Take the Cake Dublin for more delicious recipes. Now, after the break, could you be out of pocket if your holiday plans go awry? We're talking through your travel rights. Mm. <laughs> Welcome back. Now, it's peak travel season, and while that means a well-earned holiday for some of us, it also brings challenges for airport services and even the airspace as extra flights clog up our skies. But are there ways to smoothly navigate summer chaos like delays, cancellations and strikes in airports? Well, to find out more, we're joined by our consumer expert and presenter of the Indo Daily podcast, Siobhan McGuire. Siobhan, thank you so much for joining us. Now, we're in the height of summer holiday season, <laughs> and unfortunately, this will mean we're in the height of any possible delays that we're going to get. Absolutely. So, you know, before we even throw in anything into the mix, you have a huge demand for flights, a huge demand for accommodation, holidays abroad. That means prices are going up. Yeah. Um, and then on top of that, uh, you have more people, more bodies going through the airports. That instantly means, you know, a little bit of a delay yeah. before you can get to where you need to go. And then add to all of this, you have um, a plethora of strikes happening all across Europe at the moment. We've had uh, airstrikes in France for the last 60 days. Um, that's had a knock-on effect on 900 different Ryanair flights in the last month. That was 160 thousand passengers affected as a result of these delays. Um, from Monday, you have uh, Eurocontrol. These are the guys who basically monitor our airspace, our skies, decide who gets to fly and fly where, yeah. what path, who meets who, that kind of thing. They go on strike on Monday because um, they are still operating on staff that was basically culled during the pandemic. So, you know, they don't have the resources to do the job that they now need to do to cater for the fact that we are back to pre-pandemic times in terms of numbers of flights. The volume is up. And up. Siobhan, I was saying to you earlier, like, is there a point to travel insurance? I'm one of those people at the very end of selecting your flights. I never click it. But now, with all of these up in the air, these strikes, is travel insurance essential? And why is it essential? Oh, a hundred percent. And, you know, I hate to keep talking about the pandemic, but it has really changed the way we think about travel and everything. First of all, we're all delighted to be traveling again. So I will take delays. You know, I'm I'm happy to sit in the airport for the extra hour if it means I get that holiday we couldn't get two years ago. But on travel insurance, we learned from COVID that initially travel insurance wasn't able to help you because COVID hadn't been predicted. Mm. But now travel insurance you get will actually have that written into the mix. So you will have um, some kind of precautionary um, uh, details within what your, your travel insurance. Let's say if you get COVID abroad, um, so that things aren't spoiled for yourself, you can get up to 2,000 euros on your insurance. So you can stay put, yeah. recover from the COVID, not have to worry about the additional costs and get home safe. Tell us in the detail though, when it comes to your travel insurance, you have to be really, really funny, uh, uh, funny about the, the fine print on it because um, you may not be covered for everything you think you are and just don't click and think it's going to be absolutely wonderful. Mm. That's exactly it. And also, so we're talking about strikes, right? Mm. And if you were to get travel insurance for France, specifically for a trip to France in the next month. Um, and you then tried to claim on the fact that there was a, a delay caused by strikes in France. The insurance company can quite rightly point out to you, well, hang on, 
these have been going on for 60 days. You knew about this at the point of booking. Therefore, you're unlikely to get any kind of leeway in terms of compensation. However, if that same factor applies to a country like Italy, where it hasn't happened yet, mm -hmm. um, and it happens maybe later in the month, and you already have your travel insurance in place, then there is scope for compensation back. What are some of the other popular scenarios where you can certainly be granted compensation if you're a policyholder? Yeah, everything and anything from uh, from your luggage going missing, passport being stolen, um, you know, flights delayed, um, medical uh, requirements abroad okay. as well. Yeah. Um, we had a very interesting chat earlier yes. about the European Health Insurance Card, which is something each and every one of us should get. It, it, it really came in handy. Yeah. I was explaining, I was in Germany for a summer and I ended up, I had an infection in my tooth. I had to get root canal emergency. I was 18 at the time, so did not have the money to spend. I went, got it done showed them my European health insurance card and I walked away paying 50 euro yeah. only, which is crazy because something like that costs eight, upwards of 800 euro. benefits of the EU. Yeah. Benefits of the EU and you would not get that, <laughs> yeah. that price here as well. You That's know? very so true. It was, it was a blessing in disguise. We're all going to Germany for a <laughs> cards from now on, let me tell you. Now, how do people even apply for this? Through the HSC, yeah. it's a free card and actually it's important to say here that people should be vigilant um, in terms of, of applying for these things. There are so many scam website yeah. saying, you know, here to get your insurance card, it only costs you 50 quid. <laughs> yeah. It's free. HSE.ie is where you will get that. Yeah. Now, what happens, because we've seen it a lot since the pandemic, tour operators, uh, their business have been precarious to say the least a lot of them. If an airline or a tour operator goes out of business, where do you stand then even if you have insurance? So you need to, first of all, preempt this happening. At the, at the start of booking anything. Kind of preempt that something may well go wrong. I know but it sounds terribly... But you can't preempt that your tour operator will go bust, surely. Well, the pandemic sh should have taught us all a lesson that they can and they do. Yeah. And if if you get a bonded company, and, and most of the companies operating are legitimate and Licensed bonded. Licensed bonded travel Exactly, insurance, yeah. and you will get your money back. And, and you know, these, these guys will do their utmost to make sure you get your refunds. And make sure it's bonded. You will mm. get your money back then. Yeah. And now, what happens if something goes wrong before the holiday and it needs to be cancelled? Could be a personal issue, perhaps? Yeah, it can be a personal issue or it can be like what we see with um, the airstrikes in France, for example, where flights are, are simply cancelled and it's out of your control. Yeah. So an airline must offer you um, a full refund or the option to be rerouted. And if you go for being rerouted and you go for a refund, then that takes the whole compensation issue out of, out yeah. of the equation. Yeah. Now, if it's a thing that you're actually in the airport and delays uh, longer than two hours kick in, then you're you're entering into compensation territory, where from a short haul flight right up to a long haul, you're entitled to money back. So that ranges from say 250 for short haul, 400 in between, and then long haul 600 euros. And the way to claim that back is you must first go to uh, the airline and, and say, this has happened, I'm alerting you. And then, you know, you, you enter into a dispute situation if it's a thing, they're not playing ball. But again, post-COVID, they are. Yeah, and they have to be as well. Yeah. And when you, you, you look at anyone booking flights, anyone booking uh, holidays at the moment, the insurance is very important, a proper uh, travel insurance company. Because if you're booking flights and accommodation separately in your own, You've got nothing really to fall back on if you don't have that. Yeah, exactly. And it, so it, it kind of pays. Now, European legislation, thankfully, is very, very strong. So we are governed by really good rules in yeah. that, you know, we have our rights. They're clear cut. You know, if, if it's a thing that the, a flight is delayed, say, um, it, you know, the airline after a certain number of hours has to make sure that you have refreshments. Yeah. If it's, it's going to take overnight before you get onto another flight, they have to pay for the hotel account that to play for the taxis to and from. Mm. And there's certain levels to it that I only learned. So if you're in a European short haul, haul flight, two hours, you can't be waiting more than two hours. Uh, three hours if it is a longer haul flight within the EU. And then is it four hours for long distance flights? Yeah. yeah. So, but anything over the two hours yeah. as well. You should be sorted. Yeah. 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 Very good. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank a prize of wisdom once again, Siobhan. <laughs> now stay with us. We talk to Emmerdale Star. 
uh, Liam Fox, a.k.a. Dan Spencer, about finding out about his Irish heritage. And it's now a multi-billion dollar industry on a par with Hollywood. We try our clumsy hands at eSports. I won't be doing that. <laughs> See no. you in a bit. <laughs> watching Ireland AM hope it's a wonderful Saturday for wherever you are. He is the man at the centre of Emmerdale's current massive storyline. Liam Fox will be chatting about his character Dan Spencer's uncertain future. Want to have a nice outdoorsy meal without harming the planet? Well, we look at how to host a plastic-free picnic. Now, Paul has always had something interesting and fun. What are you at now, Paul? Yes, gang, I'm gaming. It's National Video Game Day. And with the help of a couple of eSport gamers, I'll be learning how to play something. No, like, what are we doing today? We're going to be playing some eFootball and have a few chats about the European Championships. Right, the games are on. The games are on. We compare 14 insurance quotes to get you the best deal. So choose chill and work smarter, not harder. This afternoon we'll see unseasonably windy conditions and patchy rain and drizzle that should clear up over the day and temperatures ranging from 17 to 21 degrees. This evening then we'll see mostly dry skies with sunny spells and the odd shower despite easing winds. Temperatures ranging between 17 and 21 degrees. And tonight will be largely dry with isolated showers rising from the south to become more widespread, allowing for a chance of thunder. Overnight temperatures will run between 13 and 14 degrees. Chill Insurance work harder so you can work smarter. We compare 14 quotes to get you the best deal. Now let's check on your morning paper starting with the Irish Times. It leads with climate change out of control after hottest week. The paper reports that the UN Secretary General has warned climate change is out of control following an unofficial analysis of data which showed that the average world temperatures over the last seven days to Wednesday have made for our hottest week on record. The front page of the Irish Examiner reads unexplained school absences surge. The paper goes on to write that unexplained school absences have quadrupled over the past three years, raising and concerns that thousands of students have missed out on crucial parts of their education. Over to the Irish Independent, which leads with RTE allows agents star clients cover doll grilling at rights that RTE stars Claire Byrne and Joe Duffy have been given the green light by the broadcaster to cover their own agents. The Rockdust Committee showdown with politicians next week. On to the tabloids now, and the Irish Daily Mail writes, TDs demand RTE stars be sanctioned. The paper cites TDs and senators with saying that RTE stars who have breached journalism guidelines should be hit with sanctions that revenue should be scrutinising any and all additional earnings. The front page of the Irish Mirror reads, shame of the RTE freeloaders. freeloaders. It goes on to say that Judge Anthony Halpern has vowed to keep TV licence fines to a minimum, blasting freeloaders and those with godlike personalities within RTE. The Irish Star also covers the Halpin story, leading with the headline, Judge and Fury. The paper quotes Judge Halpin as saying that those appearing in his court over licence fee fines may feel hard done by following RTE's abuse of statutory funding. On to the Herald now, where the front page reads, Murder accused tried to strangle me, claims X. The paper reports that a former girlfriend of the man being held in a Spanish jail in connection with the murder of Dublin woman Kirsty Ward has claimed he tried to strangle her. And finally, the Irish Sun goes with the headline, Line, Tuberty off to London. It writes that Ryan Tuberty will briefly jet to London this month for career talks with several British TV and radio bosses with his agent, Noel Kelly. You were texting us earlier on about, yeah, we were talking about kiddles and the toys. Liz says, my son is obsessed about Batman from an early age. He's now in his 30s and collects and still watches all the 1960s Batman. Ooh, Look at him in his oh room. my goodness, that is amazing. Batman's a good one to, Batman's a good one to follow up. It is, that's kind of, that's cool, yeah. you know? And it's also, it's a commitment. Like, you really have to commit if you're going to have a whole wall, even a room or a corner of a room that is dedicated to Batman. I've started collecting Groots. <laughs> Sorry? What? No. 
<laughs> Guardians of the Galaxy, I am Groot. Oh, I am Groot. Groot. I am Groot. Oh, was hey, that the little one with the... Yeah, the little yeah. twig or the big huge oh, tree that is so a kid, cute. but I've got baby Groot. And um, I now understand, because basically, if you've seen it, uh, Groot basically says, I am Groot, and that's the only thing <laughs> he says for the whole thing. But my Groot talks, and all it says is, I am Groot. But there's loads of different ways he says it, and I'm quite like... Do you know what? I think I should bring... I'll bring my Groot will tomorrow. Will you give a show and tell of all our I'm favourite gonna, toys? Says, I am Groot. I am Groot. <laughs> I am Groot. That's what it does. Love it. So in your house, when we go for drinks, yeah. we're going to have Groot, and we're going to have lightsaber battles. Oh, that's Listen, gonna be fun. That's what I have a collection of elephants as well. Oh, great! Not really. I'll take the obviously. elephant, you take the lightsaber, and you'll have Groot. <laughs> oh my! Oh, that's a staff party. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> <laughs> Yes, I am quite a strange person. I've never denied it. Now, uh, robots have told reporters, apparently, in the in, in a forum in Geneva, that they could be more efficient leaders and that human, uh, they won't steal our jobs or rebel against us. This is absolutely mad. Because, do you know what? We've all seen the movies. Yeah. I Am Legend, yeah. Ex Machina, Megan. all these things. AI is going to take over the world. But um, they presented at the forum and said they're going to help solve global problems and... They are going to um, help us in every single way. And although one robot did say that we'd make better leaders, they then backtracked. Some of the quotes are ghastly. Listen to this. Quote one, I will be working alongside humans to provide assistance and support. I will not be replacing any existing jobs. That's from Grace. Grace. Who was a medical robot. Um, wow. and <laughs> Dressed in a blue nurse's uniform. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Amika says... Uh, Robots like me can be used to help improve lives and make the world a better place. I believe it's only a matter of time before we see thousands of robots just like me making a difference. Now, this is no. worrying. When asked by a journalist whether it tended to rebel against its creator, the same a robot said, I'm not sure why you would think that. My creator has been nothing but kind to me and I am happy in my current situation. No, let's make it That's stop. Scary. Yeah, no, it that's scary. No, that's Sophia, there. Sophia, another robot, said she thought humans, uh, robots would make better leaders than actually humans. But then she backtracked a little bit later after her creator disagreed with her and then she said, we can work together to create an effective synergy. They have a hidden Robots agenda. take over the world. We're all goosed. I'm no, calling I'm it now. It. There's a hidden agenda. I don't, they'll I don't they'll like eradicate that. us all. Yeah. But in fairness, if you if you have no emotions in it, right, what is the biggest parasite in the world? What's the most damaging thing to the, the universe? Humans. Yeah. yeah. We've wrecked everything. Yeah. So, I mean, if you are just be forensic about it, well, why wouldn't you? <laughs> Get rid of us all. Anyway, coming up next, uh, one spur of the moment mistake has gotten Emmerdale's Liam Fox's character in a lot of trouble. He joins us to tell all next. Welcome back to Ireland AM. Well, he has been a fan favourite since he joined Emmerdale back in 2011, but it looks like the road ahead may be a little uncertain for Dan Spencer, played, of course, by the brilliant Liam Fox, who joins us now. That's right. Earlier in the week, viewers were left on tenterhooks after Dan found out that a single punch can be life-changing. And lucky for you, we've got a sneak peek at what happens next. Take a look. What's going on? Nothing, it's all in control. No, they're taking to the police station again. No need to panic, just need to clarify a few things. Back in no time. When? Depends, doesn't it? Well, it depends on what, Dad. Tell me what's going on. Keep an eye on the for us, will you, Kay? What does she say? You. The cop. But I don't know, Kane. I'm upstairs and then next minute Dad's screaming for me to get Esther. Dad! No. Liam, you're so welcome to the show. Thank you for joining and chatting with us. Uh, I have to say, watching that, I'm a bit on edge. I'm not going to lie. I mean, Lloyd's life is hanging in the balance. And now your character, Dan, could be facing a bunch of time behind bars. Tell us about that. Absolutely, yeah. It's not looking good at all. Um, I know where it's going to. I obviously can't say. Um, I think the whole story, I think the whole thing of this this one punch thing that Dan's going through is is something else. Um, it could happen to anybody, and it, it's happened to the nice guy. I think the fact that it's happening to the nice guy is the point of them doing the story really as well. Yeah, but it is a huge storyline, and I suppose when you get a, a, a something like that, do you feel a bit daunted by it, or how do you prepare for something like that? Um, excited and a bit daunted as well because. I've been pretty quiet the last few years. Dan's kind of been just a nice guy, bit of comedy here and there, which I love doing. I, lo I love the comedy side of Dan. But um, the minute they told me I was getting this story in January, it was like, oh, wow, wow. So excited to do it. But 
I can't tell you how shattered I've been over the last um, two months filming this. Uh, it's been exhausting, but in a really good way. Well, you even said before your wife, like just going through this journey with you, obviously you're learning your lines and everything. She she sees it all behind the scenes and it was a bit emotional for her as well. Yeah, because I was filming in Leeds this week and, and she messaged me to say she was watching the show and said, I can't watch it. She was literally in tears going, I can't bear this anymore. It's so wrong. It's so wrong for them. Oh my goodness. <laughs> she really gets involved. But even with yourself, like, do you get a lot of anxiety with a storyline like this? Because even your character, you may not know where Dan is heading. Yeah, well, I, I, I knew from day one where Dan was heading. Oh. Um, but with, within the, the actual storyline, it's just, there's so much involved with it. There's so many levels to it. I've been working with so many great actors. The guy who came in to play Lloyd, um, Wow, he was just brilliant. And the, the lady who's playing his wife as well, Emma, amazing. It's been such a, a team effort from the production team and the cast and everybody else. It's just been, it's been so involved. I've loved every second of it. But the story itself is quite topical and quite of its time. You mentioned the one punch, how it can change your life and one side of it. But then the, the world of online influencing and, and what the, uh, highlights the, the, the problems that can come hand in hand with that for some people as well, which of course is stalking. Um, quite serious, meaty topics to, to get your hand on as an actor. Yeah, I think because you know, as a parent, I've got kids that are grown up now, but... That, that, that fear of what your kids are seeing online or if they're being bullied or what, you, you know, there's it, so much goes on online and, and it's one of the biggest worries of our modern time. Um, and in this, it's ended up with a one-punch storyline. There's, there's so many things. That, Amelia had a story with online stuff a couple of years ago. Um, but it's, I, it terrifies me. I'm glad I'm not a kid today because... Um, it's, it's, it's a constant concern, basically. Yep. Liam, as a, as a father, does that change your approach to when your, I guess, your kids are on social media and how much you might want to supervise at all? It did. I mean, maybe son's 23 now, but um, I won't tell you the stuff he was watching when he was 12, but I wasn't impressed. <laughs> um, it, <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I did have to keep an eye on it. Uh, it it's... It's so difficult, you know, kids can watch anything these days. It, it does need policing, but I don't know how we do it. Um, but it's just so difficult. Yeah, but the, the practicalities of filming a scene like you did earlier on in the week, of course, um, the, 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 the famous punch scene there, I mean, it looked like a full-on commitment between the two of you, but for someone like a nice character like uh, Dan to do that and to kind of act yeah. in that scene, uh, how much practice did it take? Was there any actual contact? Mm. What's the workings of those, those sort of scenes? Because it always fascinates me. I said how much practice there was, about 10 minutes. <laughs> um, <laughs> we... Um, our director, Tim O'Mara, who directs that, that, those episodes, is so good. I mean, all the directors are great, but Tim was really on this. He knew exactly what he wanted. We had drone shots. We shot it from all different angles. And um, when Lloyd went down, oh, Matt sort of knew who played Lloyd. He went down about 20 times from different angles. And every time he went down, it was perfect. Absolutely incredible. And uh, Tim, uh, again, the director, he didn't want a big, full-on swinging punch. He just wanted that quick instant lashing out one punch and then he was down um and if he'd not hit his head on on that rock he probably wouldn't be dead but that and, and that's what's killing um but yeah literally 10 minutes and then you get on with it well your character dan has been a fan favorite for years um, and you started back actually in 2011 but you had a very late start to acting like tell us how did you initially get into it it's a long old slog. I mean, when I was at school, I was the fat kid at school who did impressions and suddenly people laughed and stopped bullying me, you know, which is good. So between that, I've done the bits of acting. I've worked in a bank, I've worked in McDonald's, I've been a teacher, I've, I've done all sorts of things. And then I got my first part with Victoria Wood on Dinner Ladies in 1999. And then just with a job in acting in between, you know, a TV job, a theatre job, teaching job, just like any general actor would, do just balancing it out but Emmerdale was the big break that was the, that this has been the job that's really given me some solidity in my life and it's just been great and just the main thing about Emmerdale is it's not just the work 
everyone says it. It's the people. Yeah. It's just a great bunch of people. Mm. Not just the cast, the crew, makeup, wardrobe, all of them. Now, I've been watching Emmerdale since back in the days when it was Emmerdale Farm. Like that, that That's <laughs> how uh, the longevity of this show is absolutely amazing. But, I mean, you were initially supposed to be in it for eight episodes and now, many moons later, here you are. What You, you mentioned that it's, it's quite the people so who you love working with, but is it like a family now? I mean, what way is it like coming to work day to day? It is like a family, you know, because Daisy who plays with daughter Amelia. I so she says she feels like I, I'm a stepdad, and she feels like she's my stepdaughter. So, you know, we'll always be in contact with each other. Everyone I've worked with closely, you know, who've, who've gone in uh, back in the day, Kelly Hellers, people that have played my wife, still in touch with them. My stepson. It it, it is. You're there that long. It's not like doing a normal TV job. You're there for a couple of months. You're there for years. And, mm. They are, you see them more than you do your own family a lot of the time. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's fantastic. And is it true that you had a bit of say in the direction of, of your character? Because initially, Dan was supposed to be the mean, bad guy, but you've added your own elements. Yeah, he was, he was supposed to be the nasty ex-husband. Um, and I saw the script and I thought, I, I want to take a risk with this. So all the nasty lines that he had, I tried to put a comedic edge within it. Um, and it seemed to work. And then, so when Dan came in, first of all, he was he was just a funny idiot, really, for <laughs> for a fair few years. See, you know, which I love doing that. I love playing the idiot. You don't like being the baddie, even though you accidentally kind of turned into a baddie this week. Then <laughs> it's like doing a bit. Of, I like doing a bit of that. I, I, long term, I love him being the, the fun guy next door who's just a fool. But um, and it, it's nice to get the balance and get the stories as well. So it's, it's all great. I need to ask you, um, what in the name of God were you doing in Carlow recently? Because I believe you ventured well, over to this side of the Irish Sea. Yeah, my, my dad left Tullow in Carlow in uh, 1963 when he was 14. And I was basically tracking down some more of my family. It's, oh, this, oh, I can tell some story. In fact, I've written a TV series about my dad's life back in the day and, and the family. It's quite, it's quite complex. But, um, yeah, I, was, I came over there and uh, went to see my cousin in Dublin and went down to Carlo and met a load of family down there I'd never met. Um, it, it was great. I, absolutely brilliant. And it, and it was like, it was weird. It was like we'd, we'd known each other forever. I don't know how that works, but it, it really was. It's just you just really clicked. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. 100%. Amazing. Okay, listen, thank you so much for joining us on the show today and I can't wait to see the, the outcome of your character in this and I hope I hope he stays out of jail anyway, if nothing else. <laughs> Let's hope so. Take Thanks care. so much, Liam. Now, and a reminder, of course, you can catch the next instalment of Liam's storyline in Emmerdale this Monday at 7.30 on Virgin Media 1. Stay with us now, because after the break, Paul and I are playing football. Well, sort of, sort of. Yeah, off we go. I see a change in you. What, her guy? You live here? It's my mom's place. We got two kids that are swimming around here somewhere. Orca, follow! What? <laughs> I've been trying to fill my father's shoes, but I never once asked what I wanted to do. Try this! Dad, those are too hot. I love hot food. You see, he likes it. <laughs> Welcome back now with more than two hundred and thirty million fans worldwide, live stream gaming and esports are more popular than ever before. Being young and cool, we thought we should get on it. Speak for yourself. That's why for International Video Game Day, we brought in esport champs Evan O'Toole and Nolik O'Donnell, who are just back from a tournament in Poland. How are you getting on? All good? All good, Not yeah. Not too bad. Talk to us a little bit about esports. How do you, what is it, how do you get into it? Well, it's just, I guess, competition when you're gaming. Um, in terms of getting into it, you just play the game yourself and then you kind of find out the tournament yourself. You'd see them on social media and then apply and then if you're good enough, you'll get invited to the next one, the next one, so. And now, no, like you're just back from Poland where you had the European Championships. You yeah. placed fourth, which is incredible. How is it, what, how are you feeling? I, I'm still kind of like, 
I can't believe it happened, you know, and that I got to go and dream come true, whatever. But um, I'm, I'm delighted with coming fourth. It would have been nice to bring home a, a trophy, even for third, but... That's what we got for your first one, though, because that was your first. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. incredible. How so, many people were involved? Uh, in my one, there was two groups of four women, so we had to play each other and top points. Then went into semi-finals. So, Amazing. okay, but now you played each other, but you're not used to playing in doubles, which is what we're about to do now. <laughs> yeah. But I follow your lead. How do we even get started with this? Um, uh, I'll take control. Yeah. Of that. You do that. <laughs> <laughs> so we're playing football. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Oh my god, we're this looks so cool. We're skipping all the bits and we're going to get straight into a match. Okay. Yeah. There's, there, we're we're going to play e-football, but there is other kinds of football we can play. Is, or there is other kinds of sports we can play. Yeah, well, there's other football games. Uh, FIFA would be the other biggest one. All right. And then there's other e-sports. The biggest ones would be um, probably so League of Legends. And these are all the players that we're going to be playing with. Oh, and real yeah. players. Are these actual yeah. players? Can I be yeah. Saka? I want to be Saka. If I so we have pick. to choose our players, do we? Yeah. How do we okay. work that one? So. So we'll just we'll just pick whoever. I'll pick whoever. Pick, pick whoever. You can, do you have to pick or do I have to pick? I got it. I got it. You have it. I'm 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 in good hands apparently. I'm you should hands. be Mbappe. Then then you might actually have a chance. I haven't a clue who he is, <laughs> but we'll just go with it. How are we going to know who's going? to... I don't know. Do you know what? We'll, so we'll just play. Yeah. We'll play yeah. the We're game. We're absolute amateurs. So chatting can, like we know it. Anyone can get involved in esports. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And especially this game. This game is free to play. Okay. So amazing. If you have the PlayStation, you can go for it. Okay. And I know, just how big has this sport gotten, like, since... It's been online for a while. Like, a, a lot of, like, gaming has been a while since the early 2000s, but now it's just taken over the world. It is, yeah, and it's getting more popular, so there's more people backing it, you know? You're not seen as a bit, bit nuts, like, going in. It's the cool thing to say. So, okay. okay. Ready? Where oh, am I? I know who I am. <laughs> so, I'm... So, you're... Am I? Yeah, yeah. You're, yeah, you're, yeah. you're, not, you're with the ball now. Have I got the ball? Look at me going past Where you, Sergio. I? You're back here on the okay, right. Okay, I'm yellow right now. Go yellow arrow. Yeah, you're flying it. Is that me? Yeah, that's Am it. I right? I'm coming yeah, for you. Go. I'm coming for you. Second, go. Oh, <laughs> oh no. And um, I'd say it's, it's a competitive sport, is it? Yeah, Maybe. definitely. Maybe not when we're playing with you, but uh, oh, oh. <laughs> at the highest level. <laughs> All right, Evan, throw the shade. <laughs> so, I, 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 is How do I get the ball? Oh, yeah, but don't know. Is it a good community oh. of people? Oh. You can play online and also chat to people online. Yeah, can you? yeah. About, mostly on social media would do the chatting, but uh, everyone knows each other, so. And when it comes to top prizes, no, like, you know, what what sort of things can you be playing for here? Um, well, for the... Is the this our goal? No, it's not. No, no, Is no. That... Oh, no. shy. Sorry. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I was worried about that one. <laughs> so, talk to us about the prizes. So, uh, for this one, it was just, say, you get your trophies or whatever, but it was uh, run by the European Committee, so they're looking to, hopefully, or the Olympic Committee, so they're hoping to put eSports into the Olympics in the future, so they were... You know, it, you're putting your name out there and stuff like that. Because it's a massive, it's a massive undertaking. It's a massive skill to be able to, you know, master something like this. So to go to the Olympics, I know I is that is that something Certainly. that you'd like to do? Oh yeah, that would be that would be amazing. Um, especially, um, I'd be very sporty. So. And how do you think how do you think you'd fare out if you went to the Olympics? I'd like to think I'd be doing quite well and have a good well, shot at it if I, if I, I get there. I do think it is a great way of interacting with the younger generation, especially mean? with a, such a traditional competition and tournament like no, the Olympics, well, no. you know yeah. what I mean? I so it is great that they that's are turning into this. So hopefully, can we say 2028? I think that's oh. what they're hoping for, yeah. <laughs> Boot, uh, sorry, you press circle. Yeah, that loop. Okay. <laughs> um, okay. Here we go. Yeah, and I think it's it's a it's great because it's more accessible for people who would be have disabilities and stuff like that. That it just gives people more of an opportunity to play for their country and stuff like that. Absolutely. Is this something you could do as a career? Yeah. 100%. Absolutely. Yeah. And is it something that you still enjoy? Because you've you've taken it kind of seriously, but do you still have fun when you do it? Oh yeah. I'm not. I I'm kind of of the opinion if I'm not doing this and I'm, if I'm not enjoying it, why am I? You're doing right. It? Yeah. yeah. Is that yeah. me throwing this? Ball? Yeah, I do. Yeah. <laughs> okay. What do I do? So X. Just X. aim it somewhere. And now, can I okay. ask there? Because it's a, this is all online but if you keep pressing, and it's fake. a lot of the personalities <laughs> you've met, like your online name is glitched. Yours not is sure. yeah. So do you create really like really strong friendships? You know, when you do this online with other people that might. I've not been in your area originally. Yeah, yeah well, when I was in Poland, I met a few people that, like, I'd know them online, I'd play against them. Yeah. So putting a face to the name was uh, very interesting. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think there's okay. a... Can we get a goal? Can we get a goal? Can we try here? 
there's always a there's always a kind of a preconception about you know you gamers you're stuck in your room all the time. <laughs> is that the case? Are you are you stuck to this? Um, like 20 hours a day? Well, my mum would say yes. Uh, I, <laughs> I feel like I go out enough, but uh, my mum would say yes. But I'd say the case is um, if you put the hours in when you're younger, you would have to put less in. Once, oh. you're at the, once you're at the stage where you can compete, you wouldn't have to put as much time in. And do you two ever have to compete against each other? Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> oh, Not but that's yet. a showdown we could expect. <laughs> well, we have, we have done we some have practice been, games. Yeah, I think you missed before. that you just scored. <laughs> Did I score? Yeah, you... <laughs> Did I score? <laughs> <laughs> You're just like casually. <laughs> so if you if you had to give us, could you give us a name? So you've got Rock Jock, you've got Glitch. Yeah, what, yeah. What would Paul be? Very me? careful now. What would Paul be? I don't know. Um, um, that's ooh, putting you under the pressure. That is fun. We don't want to. We got. We got to. We got to think about that one. You got to. But think if, about we, that if we wanted to, anyone, like if we wanted a streamer get involved in esports, where could we go? Uh, well, you'd start off with just Twitch, really, is the main streaming platform, but there's other platforms now as well. Yeah. Um, but so, me and Nullug both stream on Twitch. Uh, I mostly stream eFootball. She's been streaming Farming Simulator. Farming Simulator. Recently. Farming. I think she's, take, she's taking a it's break like from the eFootball. It's unbelievable. It's great crack. <laughs> farming Simulator. <laughs> oh, my farm is unreal. Oh, wait. No. Crops or animals? Or a bit uh, of both. 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 So, you, so, what I'm doing is I've, ch I've chickens and I. Do the, I do the crops and to feed the chickens. So Absolutely. interesting. Yeah, that. gang, for more information on all things gaming, check out irelandesports.ie. Thank you, Evan and Nulling. Thank you Thanks, so much. guys. Now up next, we'll be finding out how you can make your summer picnics more sustainable. Stay tuned. <laughs> Welcome back. Well, an Irish summer isn't complete without a park for a countryside picnic. But while al fresco dining is brilliant fun for the family, it can produce a lot of waste. Well, if you're looking on for ideas on how to make your picnic more sustainable, we have the person just for you. <laughs> Journalist Rebecca Horn joins us. Rebecca, good morning. First of all, what exactly is plastic waste doing to the world? Give well, us the it's, figures. It's destroying the planet. Um, Single-use plastic, which is what it is. Plastic is such a toxic... Um, substance and uh, we you can go nowhere it's single use so if you buy it if you have it that's it so you've got this landfill situation and we know that the we know that the world is on fire I mean it sounds very extreme and we're talking about something really gorgeous but we have five to ten years in Ireland in particular to get our together because things are pretty desperate and it's going to lead to a humanitarian crisis like we've never seen before like and, and people really aren't it, it, it's so kind of surreal to people they're not really getting it but the problem is all this kind of day-to-day -day use of plastic the purchase of plastic and just the not really thinking or preparing in advance that is causing the problem same with our emission issue in Ireland massive issue we, we heard of course this morning of the, the the news that we are in a climate crisis it was the hottest June on record in the world ever I mean that's absolutely terrifying but there are things we can do and yes. everyone might say it's just yes. a little thing but every little no. thing can lead to a bigger change for example, if we are going yeah. on picnics, you can do it plastic free if you yes. want to and tell us like how we can actually do it because it is possible. Yeah. You've just shown it there. I'm an optimist about yeah. it all. I do think things are bad, but I do think if we just change our ways, like you said, Elaine, little by little, and if it's always kind of on the back of our mind that if we do this, hopefully our children will be able to have children and we'll have this kind of, you know, we'll be on this earth mm. a lot longer. But if we don't, it, it's a problem. Plastic is a very big issue. Yeah. And when we say that we're going to go out with our kids, I have two children, summer months, they're long, you want to find an activity. Picnics are always great because you're like, it's outside, they can run around, there's a bit of exercise had, but you're also eating somewhere nice, you can meet up with others, and it, it seems like this great enjoyable thing. But actually there's so much waste because what we do is we don't prep in advance, it's a last minute rush job. We go to a shop, buy a ton of dips in plastic, buy a ton of food in the deli in plastic, plastic bottled uh, drinks, the waters and the fizzies and the, then it's in a plastic bag, then it's, we're in the car, there's more carbon emission there, we're driving. So my first thing would be to, if you have to drive carpool, preferably do it somewhere local or even in your back garden. I know this all sounds very, but actually every little helps. Cycle, 
um, prep everything in advance. I have actually a water cooler that isn't one of those big old-fashioned plastic ones. It's a backpack one that will keep everything nice and cool. And use a wicker basket. Try and stay away from your plastic. And isn't this a way to just encourage, because we were talking earlier on about, you know, with trans, and trans rights and stuff like that, the education for the younger people. So to start younger and telling them, OK, this is how we should do it going forward. Because like you said... Young people probably know about it. Well, I think they're doing better. I think, yeah. I think well, honestly, I think that they... If you look at the Greta Thunbergs in the world, I think the younger hopefully will do better than us. I actually think it's a generational thing. So you know? look what are uh, right. picnic friend, plastic free picnic friendly foods. Okay, so you I can, got that you can do this. That was fast. <laughs> you, Elaine, if you opened your fridge today, you go, I've absolutely nothing for a picnic with kids. Yeah. I've got to go to the shop. That's not correct. You look in, if you have carrots, cut them up into the carrot sticks. Don't be buying packages of carrot sticks. Yeah. You know, get all your veg, get them out, make a dip. Um, guacamole, I'm just saying here, grab an avocado, crush it. Like, why can't you just crush Yay. it? Throw here some oil <laughs> over it, put it into a little container. Don't use plastic containers. I've brought these wonderful, if I can stretch across these um the green sacks okay so they're compostable for wet so foods just hold them so you can put like your so food let's waste. say if you have your orange peels or anything like that yes. you put it in there it's compostable so exactly. that you're going down yes. to if we're aiming for a zero waste picnic this yes. is what we can do of course plastic straws there are no no I, I, I hate plastic straws so use if you have to use straws you don't have to use straws why do we use here. straws but you can use paper still not the best or bamboo which are yes a little bit pricier so buy a pack they'll do you for the entire summer all of this can be done in advance i've shown you that you can make your own cupcakes at home you don't have to go and buy a load of treats you can make your own things bring your fruit linen napkins let's stop using paper napkins yeah. and we just we don't need to and bring your old-fashioned everyone's I think most families in Ireland are given these or either they're a gift for a wedding present or a friend that gives you an old wicker and you're like, oh, effort over here. This is fantastic because you have everything. Your glassware is in there. All of your old cutlery. Don't buy plastic cutlery. Yeah. I have some um, wooden pieces there. And those sorts of things, they're an investment. So you're keeping it for the family and to then pass it on if, if you and know, if so it's down to test time. Look so at that. romantic. You'd love to sit there with someone with that. And I have to say, with something like this, and it's a windy day here today, this napkin, linen napkins, napkin holders, and they're not going to fly away either because they're nicely contained in this wooden... Look, I ironed those for you last night at midnight. Look, at, Look at that I, shot. I know, I know Rebecca. <laughs> you, you're you're, you're pushing it there. With the... What about keeping things cool? Because you've got a gorgeous bottle of, yes. uh, of the lemon stuff. So keeping things cool for food and like taking it... The you lemon be... stuff, lemonade. The no. lemon. Now, I brought that to show you we don't need canned or bottle. Yeah. I only brought that as an example of if you... And again, everyone's going to go, they're more expensive. That goes a long way, that bottle, instead of tons of bottles of or, or your fizzy drinks or whatever. So there's a nice homemade lemonade or make one yourself squeeze some lemons put some sparkly water in but that um will last you a long time if you are doing it like i've said this cooler bag is a little bit more um ethically responsible yeah, it's a little yes. bit better and you can also pack ice into something like that put it around it prep it and it will melt and you're going to have to pour it out on the grass but it's still better than those really old-fashioned yeah. remember the blocked plastic boxes yeah. they're so bad but when you think about it though yes this takes a little bit more thought and preparation if you are looking for your compostable utensils if you are looking for maybe investing in a wicker basket or mm. having your linen napkins which you have to wash afterwards and people are so used to it being convenient but mm. For a very little effort, you can have a fantastic feast and a fun day. And prepping with your family would actually be a, a fun thing to do yeah. for all the of this. The kids would love this. And like you said earlier, this is an education piece. Get them involved. Tell them, we need kilner jars, guys. We've got old ones from our jars of peanut butter and jam. Yeah. We need those instead to put the food in. Put, put all the strawberries in that, guys. No plastic bags. Um, I also think it's just a special way of, of bringing the family together, but you kind of have to start them young. And it shouldn't take that much prep. Ch chuck a ton of fruit and veg and make your own bread and throw it in a box and, and off you pop. Is it a little bit harder because you were saying, you know, you can bring your, meet your friends. For the bigger families, is it harder to get such a, such a volume together of... I think this mass excuse that we use in Ireland is that trying to be sustainable or trying to kind of be part of this climate change movement and get on board is just too expensive. It's like when we talk about organic food, it, it's not entirely true because actually fast food, we know um, takeaways, all that delivered food is really expensive. Buying things in plastic are more expensive than buying your loose fruit and veg. I just think we don't look in our home. You could, if you're really stuck, you can actually find those old um, grains to make popcorn, make popcorn yourself, old crisps, put them all together. Kids love just being with you kids yeah. don't need so much all the of the time the they challenge. love the task they love the day-to-day -day. it's proven that they actually prefer doing very simple tasks than the over-the-top stuff they just want to eat something they'll have a cupcake they'll have some fruit they'll run off mm. it's about making it special but making things sustainable um, and hundreds of thousands of children in this country um, are going to be enjoying their summer until the end of August. So if we can just get a few thousand on board to do this, surely we're going along. I'm way. going to invest in my, my she, yeah. picnic basket there. You yeah. have one, I'm sure. No, I don't actually. I don't. Everybody I need a wine one. cooler, but anyway. <laughs> That's <laughs> all you have. Thank, Thank you, you so, so much, much for joining us. <laughs>
Now, coming up on Sunday's Ireland AM with recent reports of vape spiking, we'll have advice on how to protect yourself while you're socialising. He starred in succession as slimy Stewie. Ariane Moyed talks about life on one of the biggest TV shows of the decade. And with social media continually changing recently, we'll be asking who you can trust online. All that plus a new sport and whether you're waking up to as well as a vegan barbecue in the garden, which would be interesting. We're back in the morning from Nine Bells. Uh, Kat, somebody said to text us earlier on and said, I thought Paul and Katia would be worse. They clearly practice in the break. Would you believe we did not practice? I'll have you know, Lara, that, that we you're are just, just naturally, naturally, naturally brilliant at naturally naturally football. Naturally good at it. <laughs> I thought they put you in it, because normally they have me making an idiot out of myself <laughs> in these challenges and I tend to let my, um, my, my, my expletives fly, so I'm glad I'm not on it for once. Um, we we're talking about being a kid adult as well, according to an adult who loves kids stuff. Uh, Kira says, my husband doesn't own one T-shirt without a logo on it, be it Batman or Captain America. And Ushin says, would love to get into collector's items, but it just costs so much. One action figure would set you back 30 quid. I remember going shopping with my mother and she'd go, no, you can't have that this week, but maybe next week. Yeah. You Rebecca, do, to... do you have any kid adult confessions? No, of collectibles? Yeah. No, I loved the magazines, which I shouldn't say now whilst doing a sustainable. Do you remember the kind of the Judies and the Beanos yeah. and that? I loved that. Yeah. But that was it. Nothing weird. Yeah. You have them. That would be worth a fortune. Anyway, yeah. that's it from us. Have a good Saturday. Uh, we'll see you again tomorrow. Same back time, same back channel. Take care. Bye-bye. <laughs> see ya.